Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we continue our common mistakes in skincare series that I'm running here on the channel. Today is the turn of sunscreens. Over the past couple of years, I think we've all experimented with different styles of sunscreens, and hopefully you've already found your perfect pairing. However, choosing the right product is just one step in the process. Applying it correctly to the skin is key. This will ensure you get the maximum level of protection you need, but also that it applies elegantly to the skin and wears beautifully as the brands hope that it would. In today's video, I want to break down five common mistakes and errors we make when applying our sunscreens to get you maximum performance no matter what SPF you reach for. I want you to sit back, relax, let's talk common mistakes with sunscreens. Now, before we get into this video, just a quick reminder to do all that YouTube stuff if you have haven't already. If you could reach down and give this video a big thumbs up and a like, it's a fantastic way of supporting me and the channel as the more likes a video gets, the more widely YouTube distributes it on its platform. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so, so much for each and every one of you just taking the time out of your day to reach down and like the videos. I'd also love to know what your current favourite sunscreen is. What's the one that you've got on your skin at the moment? Sound off in the comments section below. As I said before, this actually forms part of a series that I'm running here on the channel. We've already covered common mistakes with vitamin C's, retinols, and peptides and in case you missed any of those videos I pull them together in a playlist that I'm going to leave a link to up there. The purpose of this is kind of to take it to the next step. I think we've all chosen products and brands that work really well for our skin. So the next step is to make sure that we're applying them properly to get maximum bang for the hard-earned coin that we invest in our skincare. But I've got a lot to say so should we cut that waffle and delve straight on in? A mistake in number one when it comes to sunscreens is believing that you're going to get the exact same product no matter where you purchase it from. This is something that's fairly unique to sunscreens but the formulations of the same brand with the same title differ wildly depending on where they were manufactured. Different sunscreens are tailored to different territories and the regulations that they have in those jurisdictions so it can be really difficult to know what you're actually purchasing. You might get a British content creator fangirling hard about sunscreen saying how amazing the filters are, how it doesn't sting or irritate the eyes and someone in the US or in the North American market might buy that same product and get a completely different experience. That's because regular Regulations differ territory to territory and brands, whilst they use the same trade name and the same branding, will change the base formulations and the filters used. It's really important that when you reach for a highly recommended sunscreen, you're getting the exact same profile of filters as what is recommended in that video or that blog that you're reading to make sure that you get the same outcomes. A really good example is this product. This is the La Roche-Posay Anthelios 50 Plus Fluid. Such a great product, relatively new to the market, it has some game-changing UV technology in it. This is like a truly broad spectrum sunscreen that delivers sky-high UVA protection alongside that really good SPF of 50 plus. It doesn't really irritate the eyes in a way that some other sunscreens will and I'm getting some great results with it. So you might be tempted to reach out and purchase this product but if you were living in the US and you bought this from a US drugstore you get a completely different range of filters in it that actually deliver very different outcomes. You'll get different levels of UVA protection which will be lower than what you'll get with this EU based formulation and you more likely see that irritation because of some of the older style filters used. You can, of course, import your sunscreens from wherever you see those filters, but you might have to pay a slightly higher price with the shipping or any import tax. All I'd say is just make sure that if you reach for a highly recommended sunscreen, you know exactly what filters are recommended and you buy the exact light for light product. Unfortunately, you can't just assume that reaching for your local drugstore and picking up the same branded product will deliver you the same outcomes when it comes to sunscreens. The second mistake I think we all make is fixating too much on the SPF. How many times have we gone into a drugstore? We just pick up the product with the highest possible SPF rating. Here in the UK, that's capped at 50 plus, but in the US, you could be reaching for an SPF 80, 100, 120. And I think we're all guided by that SPF rating rather than looking at whether it's a broad spectrum product. Sunscreens are designed to protect against two different types of light, UVB and UVA. The SPF rating actually only shows you the protection it's giving against UVB rays, the ones that burn the skin. It's not telling you anything about the protection you get against UVA rays, which are the ones that age the skin, break down collagen, and cause fine lines and wrinkles. Both of these types of rays can also trigger cellular damage and cancers down the line, so you want a broad spectrum product. Look for one with a really good minimum SPF of 30, a little bit higher if you're in a high UV environment, but also look for one with good broad spectrum coverage that's also giving you a high UVA protection factor too. If you're feeling a little bit confused by all of this, I pulled together some of the sky high UVA products on the market in a recent video, which I'll leave a link to up there. Shop any of those sunscreens and you're getting that dual protection that just covers your skin all day long. 
Mistake number three is not matching the sunscreen you choose to your individual lifestyle and the needs of your skin. I think there's a lot of what I call sunscreen shaming out there where people say you need to be reapplying your sunscreen every two hours on the second hour or you're damaging your skin and there's no point doing the rest of your routine. I want us to break this cycle of sunscreen shaming because you know what, like any ingredient or product in your skincare routine, you need to match the one you reach for to your individual lifestyle. And I would say if you're using sunscreen just on a morning, then you're already doing better than a lot of people out there. I think incorporating a good broad spectrum sunscreen into your morning skincare routine is like the basis of a really good anti-aging routine. However, the way that you choose to interact with it during the day, reply, reapply, really depends on your lifestyle. If like me, you know the chances of you reapplying during the day are pretty slim, you either forget, maybe you're rushing around and you just don't have the time for it, then I would reach for a longer protection product such as this one. This is the Sultan One's face that gives you eight hour protection. The way that this is formulated with more stable UV filters means that instead of just getting that two hour protection you're actually getting a longevity of protection which means you don't have to reapply in the same way. This to me has been game changing because I knew that I wasn't reapplying the way that I need to with some traditional style sunscreens so I incorporated that and I kind of cut the stress and the worry out of it. I'm protecting my skin in the long term. It's all about matching the products that you reach for to your individual lifestyles and be realistic. Are you going to reapply? If the answer is no then reach for one of the longer protection products because that'll just keep you covered all day long. Now, mistake number four is rubbing your sunscreen in too vigorously. This is something I think we've all done. Because traditionally sunscreens were relatively thick, or certainly on the thicker side, we had to really work them in in order to get them to disappear into the skin. Modern sunscreens don't have that same texture, or at least the really good ones don't. So you don't need to be as vigorous in terms of how you rub it and work it into the skin. A tip that I learned from Dr. Dre, who's one of my favorite content creators here on YouTube, is that two thinner layers of sunscreen will actually give you better coverage than one thick one slapped onto the skin and then vigorously worked in. The reason I don't like to be too vigorous is because this is when you get that pilling, the peeling, the balling up of the product, which honestly can just ruin your full skincare routine and you'll never be able to apply it makeup over the top of it. Choose the right sunscreen for you and then apply a couple of thinner layers of the product. Let it sink in, go in with a second layer. You get better coverage, there's less risk of pilling, and overall I just think it's a nicer application experience. If we look to like our times back on the beach when we're in our teens and we had to really work the product in, those thankfully are long gone. A nice elegant sunscreen will lay beautifully on top of itself. You'll get better coverage and minimize the risk of pilling. Mistake number five comes to paying too much for sunscreens. Now sometimes I don't mind treating myself to a little more of a luxury and bougie sunscreen but every time I've done that I'm always a little bit cautious and reserved with the amount that I apply on the skin. I always have in the back of my mind I spent a lot of money on this so I want it to last and go a long way. This isn't the approach you should be taking with sun care. You should be playing the right amount to give you that locked in guaranteed protection. I hope that everyone will just switch to a more affordable sunscreen. Because honestly, the drugstore has some great, great options. They feel beautiful on the skin. They give you sky high levels of protection. And you can be lavish with the way you apply them. You're not constantly worried that when it runs out, you'll have to reapply. And do you have the budget to do that? As with everything in skincare, you should match your sunscreen to your skin type, what you want to get out of it in terms of outcomes, and of course, your budget. And that budget is sometimes what we forget about. You need to be able to afford to buy, repurchase the product time and time again without worry. And I'd like to see everyone reach for a drugstore sunscreen and apply the right amount to get the guaranteed protection. If you're looking for a really affordable drugstore sunscreen, I covered some of my favorites in a recent video that I'll link up there. One of my favorites is this. This is the Alterist Dermatologist sunscreen. I paid six pounds for this, it lasts for the longest time possible and gives you some of the highest coverage on the market. You don't need to reach for that bougie and luxury sunscreen. You can get a great SPF at the drugstore, Ultra being one of my favourite brands. Choose from any of the ones mentioned in that video and you can be as lavish as you want to be with the application. Get that true coverage without in the back of your mind thinking, gosh, at some point I'm going to have to repurchase this and I might not be able to afford to. It's all about matching the products you choose for to your individual budget. So there you have it guys, a rundown of five common mistakes when it comes to sunscreens. Hopefully a lot of you guys might have already eliminated some of these, but there is zero judgment. I've been guilty of all of these in the past and my reasons for sharing them with you today so you can learn from my mistakes. It's all about finding the right products that work for us, but also applying them with the right techniques in the right way to get maximum outcomes and value. Like I said, sound off in the comment section below with any of your sunscreen recommendations because I'd love to hear them. Wherever you are in the world guys, stay safe, stay well, I love your skin. Take care. Bye.